What's up guys, in this video we are going to install a watt box in my brother's VR624 valve turbo project that we've been working on for a while. This is just your regular old 2.8 Jetta turbo next turbo and just the basic Reicher stuff. And here we have a watt box that he got online which is probably off any old website that has car parts. You hook this up to the ignition coil power, the fuel injector, uh, like power supply, the throttle, what else? You just hook it up to like a series of different sensors throughout the engine and then the watt box can control a, also hook it up to the clutch switch obviously, but when the clutch is down, you can floor it and this thing will take over and only let your stuff rev to a certain amount and also controls how many millisecond the spark cut is, I think. Something like that. And it also has a flat foot shifting when you're flooring the throttle, you can shift and it won't just allow it to rev all the way up, it will only allow it to rev like to a certain RPM so it doesn't blow the engine, which would be a good thing. So when he gets home here in like a half hour, we're gonna install this thing and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it because there's not very much info on this online. We're going to hook all these wires up and we're going to test it out. So this thing just comes with the box, with the this old wiring harness which is pretty long and it also comes with this cable, I don't know what you would call that, but it looks like an old like monitor um, off an old like computer with the USB on the other side and that will provide you with a way to update it I think they said on their website. You can like I don't know, whatever. You can hook up to your computer to do things, update it, maybe control different parameters or whatnot. But anyway, this thing was like 150 bucks. We're gonna install it today and see how this thing does. Hopefully we can get it all together and show you how the launch sounds, flat foot sounds. Step one. All right, you gotta find a good spot. So you guys got to find a good spot to mount this thing. <laughs> and my brother said he found a good spot. Ah. So <laughs> we're just going to go with that. And it says in the little description thing for it to be accessible when you're sitting in the driver's seat because it's going to be running and you're going to need to push the clutch in, throttle in, and be able to hit the button on the little box. So it has to be accessible when you're sitting in your seat, which is why the wiring harness is so long so you can uh, be able to wire it a decent length from your engine compartment to your driver's seat. So we're mounting that up first. It has two holes on it, like little tabs, like mounting bracket, little things. You can either use screws or zip ties. I think he's using zip ties because he don't want to screw inside of his like dash or whatnot. So mount that thing up first. All right guys, so we got this wide box installed and we just tested it out, it works. I'm gonna show you how we hooked it up. So, one of the wires has to cut the ignition, the power going to the coils. So, um, let me think. This purple and black wire was interrupted by this red and orange. So this purple did go there, but it's going through the watt box now. And the watt box needs a signal wire and for this, you can use a fuel injector or you can use an ignition coil. This one we use an ignition coil, which is right here. Just tapped in. And right there, just tapped in. And that yellow wire is now getting a signal from this coil. And it's able to like pick up how many times it's firing. And that allows the watt box to control the engine, how fast it's spinning because it cuts the coils. All right, so here we are at the accelerator and you can see that blue connector and that blue wire that goes to the voltage for the accelerator position okay and then the clutch pedal you can see that green well sorry the clutch pedal you can see that green wire and that blue connector tapping into the clutch position switch and that will tell the watt box when it is the clutch is in and it'll also tell the watt box when the throttle is applied and you have to program the watt box which we just did now and I'll show you guys that in a second but there's like 
four major like sensors that you need to hook up to, which is the ignition power, and that so that is interrupted by the watt box, so it can cut the power to the coils. The other one is a signal, which is a fuel injector or the ignition for the watt box table, so it can tell like when it's like firing. And the clutch position, throttle position, ground, you're done. And then you can download. It's like watt box user interface offline off their website, and I downloaded it on my Windows computer. I don't know if they have it for Mac. Download it on Windows computer <clears throat> and then you just basically hook it up. I'll link a video in the description. It's another YouTube video that I found online. It's a pretty good video and the guy like really goes in depth and explains how to set it up. This is just kind of like an install, like a quick thing. Um, <clears throat> this thing seems to be working good. We tested out the RPM rev limiter at like 1800 RPMs just to see if it worked and the engine was cold so we didn't want to rev it super high i'm gonna tuck these wires in a little bit more and then we're gonna drive this thing see how it does this thing's actually working so that com port that they give you is uh just a like a serial port to a usb it's like really short so if you're wanting the passenger to control like while you drive it's way too short all right guys so this is the interface that you can download offline you just type in Wallbox user interface and you can find it on their website, N2MB. And this is how you control the Wallbox, or one way to control it. And you got launch, and then you can do the no lift shift, rev limiter. There's a bunch of things you can do. It's super easy to uh, like program the Wallbox to do the things that you want. It's going to take some testing and launching and shifting, whatever, to figure out how your car is, how you drive to get this all right. But overall, this is like a pretty easy install to get a new lift shift and launch control on your car if it doesn't have one. We just did it on this VR6 and probably, I don't know, four hours, five hours, but we did a super clean install and you can't even tell it's on there. It's zip tied and mounted up under the dash where you can still access it while you're driving if you need to. So I think we're gonna drive this thing around and see how it does. I'll post a link in the description where you can buy one and that other guy's video, it's pretty good um, details on how to program it when you get it in your car to make sure it works right. Other than that, I think we're gonna go drive around and see how this does. If you like this video, stick around because I'm driving my van to all 50 states, all national parks, and I'll be posting videos on this channel frequently, whenever I have Wi-Fi, I guess. So if you wanna see that, stick around. If not, don't, and we're gonna go drive this thing around.